How's it going everybody? You know who it is. My name is Sanwu and in today's video I'm going to show you some very special features inside the Analog 4 by Electron which make this a truly unique synthesizer as I think you won't find most of these functions in any other analog synthesizer which in my opinion makes this a future classic and probably very sought after once it's not sold anymore. But anyway enough rambling. These features will take your patterns from sounding like this to sounding like that. So let's get into it. We are starting with an initialized patch on all the tracks, so completely empty pattern. I'm gonna load a new sound in track number one. And I'm gonna put a few steps into the pattern. And then I'm gonna get to the first thing that makes the analog for special, which is the parameter locks. What I can do is I can go to any parameter, hold down a step and lock that parameter in place. And I can do that for all of the steps. So far so good, nothing very special yet. A few devices out there can do that kind of stuff too. But where the Analog 4 is quite special and which also makes the Analog Rhythm and the Octa Track special compared to the other Electron devices is parameter slides. So these are not available in the little um, Digitac, Digitone and Syntax. And Parameter slide means that you can slide from the parameters that you have locked on a certain step to another step where you have locked the same parameters. So for example, if I have LFOs that I'm using for the frequency modulation on this step locked to a certain value and I have them locked here, for example, to another value and here to another value, it will slide from this one when I initiate a parameter slide on this step to wherever I have these parameters locked next. So let's try it out. This is without. And now. You can see this already gets very interesting. So let's set up more of them. Pretty cool. And it gets into the fart sound territory quickly, <laughs> but it's good fun. Let's put a few steps in between. And of course, you can go a lot deeper with this. For example, let's say we want to modulate other things than just the LFO that's doing the frequency modulation. There's so much more you can do with parameter locks. Let's go here to the filters. Next step, what makes the Electron Analog 4 very interesting, of course, are the drums. You can easily create drums with this and use it as a complete drum machine if you like. Um, and I think it sounds amazing as a drum machine. Let's just take this kick. 
lay the foundation. And I already got some other sounds in the sound pool, so I could say, get some hi-hats going on the same track. got a crazy sequence going using just two voices of the synth. So yeah, using this as a drum machine, I mean, I could go into detail. There's so much to do with it. You can lay out your drum kits and put them all into the sound browser. Cuckoo has a whole long tutorial on that. But yeah, it's super versatile as a drum machine. And what I think makes it a really nice drum machine is that, or a nice groove box in general, that I feel like all the sounds gel together very well. So it immediately sounds like it's mixed very well, in my opinion. And that's something I really like about it. And even with very few voices, just four voices, you can create quite complex things. Of course, not saying that this is complex yet. But you can go really into detail. Of course, you can also change your drums and such. Yeah, another thing that is quite cool is that you have this accent control. So let's say I want these kick drums here to be more prominent. So now they are louder than the other ones and you can tell it by how much you want them to be accented. So. If I mute the first track, you can hear that these two kick drums are way louder. Let's do it to the hi-hats. Yeah, very nice. And I believe you can do this on a per track basis, these accents. Another thing about these modifier buttons here, so the parameter slide, note slide, and so on, you don't even have to access them in this fashion. So function plus the um, corresponding button here. You can also do this much easier. Let's say I want just this step in the sequence to be accented. When I'm in the, what is it, the step record mode, I can also just hold down a step and you can see accent is highlighted. So I can just turn on and off or on and off the accent on this step right here. Same for parameter slide. I could now just put a parameter slide there. That is a function that is often overlooked and makes it very quick and easy to access these parameters without having to go in a different menu. So how about we make it even more interesting with another superpower of the Analog 4, which is the effects track. Also very often an overlooked essential part of this device that can take your sound design into a whole new and crazy direction or also just introduce some subtle changes that make your patterns come alive. So how about we start with the chorus? So what I'm gonna do is, at first I'm gonna lock some parameters into the chorus. You won't hear them at first because I don't send anything to the chorus yet, but we're gonna change that in a second, so. Let's introduce the chorus on our melody track. Um, go to the amp page. So if I turn up the chorus. We can of course also lock the send to the chorus to different values, which could make it interesting and more alive. and turn it down in general. Let's send this one into the delay. Verb. 
So now, how about we edit the delay as well? I can also lock different parameters of the delay, but first let's just set it. also randomize this page. And if we wanted to, we can even modulate it in a classic LFO fashion because the effects track also has LFOs that you can assign to whatever you want to assign it to. So how about we do that? This one is probably already assigned to the delay time. So we can slightly But we probably have already the times all locked, so it doesn't really matter. All right, let's go more crazy using the chorus. And you can really tell by just taking in and out these parameter slides, the amount of modulation it adds to your pattern is pretty insane because it just reacts to whatever you have locked before and then spits out these crazy variations of your pattern so you can just use them to jam about. So although your pattern pretty much stays the same, the sound of it can really change and you can just make patterns more interesting and make them less loopy just by changing out the parameter slides. And one thing that I almost forgot is that you can change the pattern length of your effects pattern, for example. So the effects will not always have the same change as your other tracks, meaning you will get a lot more variation and they will swerve in and out of one another. So let's change the effects track here to be only 14 steps long and see what's going to happen. And we change the master length to, I guess, infinite. How do I do this? Do I do it in reverse? Yes, to infinite. Okay. So my effects track now has a different length. So that means all these modulations that I have put in here and all the parameter locks hit on different steps of my other sequences. That means the effects will then change throughout my other pattern, so to speak. Hope that makes sense. It's just too much fun to lock in random stuff. Alright, I think we're gonna stop it here and of course we could go a lot deeper with all these functions but this is not meant to be an in-depth tutorial on all the modulation possibilities. Rather a quick look at the functions that I think make the analog for a very very special analog synthesizer and some of these even make it special in electrons lineup. So yeah, 
If you haven't checked out these functions in your Analog 4 yet, I highly recommend you to check them out and have some fun with them. As you can see, you really can take a very, very simple pattern and create something very different out of it. It's not always very listenable. Um, yeah, not always easy to listen to at least. But if you want to go into a more noisy direction or just be more experimental, it definitely is worth checking out. One thing to mention is though, be very careful with your ears when you modulate the delay. It can somehow get stuck sometimes on a very high feedback setting and you can easily blow out your ears if the feedback is turned up too high or you got it locked in the sequence somewhere, it stays in that position. So be very careful when modulating the delay and when playing with the delay. Um, yeah. It can be dangerous. Don't damage your hearing. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I would appreciate a like, a comment down below, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. And I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have a wonderful time. Peace.